tell me a little about this. It's a Gambala. So tell me who's Gambala or what is Gambala? Gambala was a guy who in the excess era of the 80s took cars that we would consider luxury cars, mostly Porsches and Mercedes, a few BMWs, and even a few Ferraris, and basically said, that's not good enough, and took them to a shop and pretty much gutted them. And he put different body kits on them, he put different interiors, different sound systems, suspension stuff. He actually didn't do much with the engines. Somebody requested modifications to the engines. There was other companies that he could send out to have that done, like Ruff, for instance, in the Porsches. So I see that it's a 1001 SEL. There's no such thing as a 1001 SEL stock, right? Well, the highest one that they made was the 560 from the factory. And obviously, with all this excess and luxury on it, they had to find a more adequate badging, and so they came up with the 1001 SEL. And Gimbala was actually recognized as a manufacturer in Germany. It it has a manufacturer plate from oh, okay. Gimbala. Wow. So, and he did the, the, was it common on all the Gimbalas to do the fancy two-tone or three-tone paint jobs? Actually, this is not a factory paint job. Oh. This was something that was done after the fact, even before I got it. When this rolled off of the line, it was a very dark blue. We can still see a little bit of that in the engine compartment, like a dark metallic blue. It has a very deep red interior with pearl white piping around the seats. Okay. It was imported into Texas directly from Germany. And that's about all I know. So, uh, I mean, they did the detail on this is amazing. Like, just in general, the like the gold on the door openers and all of that must have been redone. They electroplated everything. Every single inch of this entire thing is leather. So, uh, like this up here is leather. This down here is leather. This is leather. Everything you touch is leather, including the pillars, the roof, the headliner, everything in it. Wow. Now, a lot of this would be stock on cars today, right? With this kind of uh, luxury? Somewhat, although leather is surprisingly still used only on seating surfaces. There was a lawsuit with Nissan regarding what they call leather interior versus leather seating surfaces that kind of changed some of that. But in their quest for ultimate luxury, they basically wrapped absolutely everything in leather. And for 1985, this was way ahead of its time. So what, what kind of price tag would uh, Gambala put um, on their uh, uh, Well, everything was editions. custom. And there was different levels. There was Series 1, Series 2, Series 3 modifications. And then there was interior modifications, audio modifications. So there was a book that you would go through and pick what you wanted and from my understanding when this was new it was 285,000 Deutschmarks 285,000 Deutschmarks and that's just the aftermarket conversion that's not the car itself I would bet it included the car okay. itself as well but there was a couple of different ways that you could do these you could actually send your car to Gambala which I think was quite more common if you lived in Germany. Um, but you could ship your car to the factory and have done whatever you wanted done to it. That obviously, the price of the car would be additional because you would already own it. But with something like this that was a full factory Gambala car, I think that included the car itself. Okay. And from what I understand, he was able to get them fairly stripped down from the factory. Oh, okay. So he didn't have to pull a lot out of it before he started his retro, which would probably save him some money, too. That's my understanding. 
So go over some of the, the cool features like that are inside of the car that would that were added um, for the aftermarket build. Well, although they're taken out right now, there is motorized curtains. Oh yeah, look at that. You see the tracks. There's the rails, the motorized curtains that go all the way down the length of uh, the side windows and the back window as well, so you could kind of isolate yourself off. There's motorized tray tables that come up and present themselves to you. There's an audio system, especially for the passengers. Holy moly, with the Cartier, is that a Cartier clock? Uh-huh, Cartier <laughs> clock. And there is a... Television set in the center. And there's a VHS VCR. VHS, all right. And there is a actual refrigerator in here, lined in metal. Uh, there's a compressor in the trunk for it. And a place to put your wine glasses. Oh, it's, uh, wow. You can open that up as well. And, of course, every inch covered in leather. Every single and millimeter. All the, and all the gold plating. And everything is electroplated gold. Yep. Wow. Well, oh, you can see the speakers sitting there in the back. Yep. There's a... Uh, and you can even see the Gambala logos if you if you look from the top down. You can see the spinning G. The Gambala logo. Oh. Right there. <laughs> which is the same logo that's on the center of the steering wheel. And then also, very ahead of its time, but somewhat common now. Oh, it has. Come look over there. Audio controls oh, for the, the sound system right on the steering wheel, which back in the day, yeah, that you unheard of. Yeah, for sure. It also has digital gauges, which the same thing it, that was fairly unheard of at the time. And then one of the most unique pieces is it has a compartment that you can flip down that has a custom molded <laughs> place to put your pistol. Nice, right in there. <laughs> Cool. Security. The security feature of this vehicle. Yeah, that is. Awesome. So, can we see one of the, are the tables, the uh, backseat tables available to check out? Because you said that those are on motors, right? Yeah, let's see the engine. Okay. White stock, five liter, Euro spec, no emissions at all, uh -huh. which supposedly made more horsepower than the 5.6 liter that they imported into the U.S. a couple of years later. And you said this was a 500? This originally was a 500, which would denote that it's a five liter. Okay. Cool. I'm just gonna set this up. Oh, look at that. So that you would use one of these on the window, I take it, or the door? I think it is this one here. I might have to might have to actually turn the car on. Okay. That's the heated seats. Sorry about that, yes. guys. Here is the tray table. You press this guy here, and it presents itself to you. And then you can flip this part down, and that's where you put your wine glasses. And then you put your sandwich right there. Wow, cool. You put your 
push that back. Same thing. Just fold it right back up. So it had heated seats, and what's the other button there for? The window. Oh, that's just your rear window? Yeah, that's the... And then those are controls for the... The actual seat. Uh, rear seat, you could... Uh, it had okay. front, back. You could actually move the seat itself. Is that a Lombard or two in there? Or uh, that that's the headrest, I think. Oh. So you can actually <laughs> go up and down on the headrest. Wow. All this still works from the 80s. That's pretty impressive. That's a lot of me mechanical there's, stuff. There's a tunnel of wire next to the back. The detail there on that center console is really nice, too. And it's all leather, every inch of it. And the VCR just pops out of the center there? Well... I suppose. I've never been able to figure out how to get it to work. There is a few things that do not actually function like they did in 1985. And that's understandable. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, I did have the TV on one time, but I couldn't quite figure out the whole thing. Put that back. So what's that big green button in there? Or what are all those console uh, components? The ones in the center, I believe, are for the refrigerator and for the curtains okay. that move the... You can see the tracks moving. That would, uh, that would do the curtains. Wow. <laughs> so do you know uh, who originally owned this? Was it a super, super movie star or uh, an athlete or something or an oil baron? I wish I did. Texas oil baron trying to compete with the Saudi oil barons that probably bought these cars uh, frequently. Well, there's an interesting thing, actually. Yeah. Let's take a look. look under the glass, in the gauges, there is a person's initials. And it says JR. Under, that's under the glass. Yep. So this was originally very dark blue with very dark red interior with a white piping. And whoever JR is, that's how they ordered it. Huh. Still trying to find out who that might be. What's this component here in the leather? Oh, I believe that this is an infrared, to, to, uh, infrared sensor to control the stereo. Oh, okay. Not positive. The other thing that it could possibly be is some type of radar detector, maybe. Don't know. Not everything, unfortunately. I know, and as you can see, some things got some sun. And that certainly didn't happen from when I had it, but that would need to be redone at some point. So, um, in the stereo system. So there's, there's this nice stereo set, um, uh, up here, but then there's all the stuff in the back and the top. So how, is it all one stereo or is there two different stereo systems? I believe it's two different stereo systems. Okay. And I think that the driver, though, can control both of them somehow. You can select the deck and you can pick which one you want to uh, control. And I, I don't know what kind of a mess it would be if you had one system playing up here and then another yeah. system in the back, because there isn't any kind of a divider like a limousine. So I suppose that whoever would be up here would technically be the driver and, and uh, would be told, hey, man, you need to keep your system down because <laughs> we're listening to Beethoven in the back here. You know? <laughs> and you can see the digital gauges there are somewhat functional. You can... See the little tachometer kind of going up. And you can see the gimbal logo underneath there as well. And then the spinning G on the steering wheel. That was kind of their logo. So how many of these were made? Do you have any idea? Or what years were they man or were, were the retrofits? They call them tuners, right? Yeah, tuner cars. Lots of companies made tuner cars. Um, Gimbala was known to be one of the best. 
and I don't know the exact numbers. I had heard something like six, maybe, but uh, I've unfortunately not been able to find out hardly any information on the internet at all. Wow. Now, this is a piece of history, piece of uh, 80s luxury. Very Miami Vice, <laughs> and thought it could stand to have a little bit of documentation because there just isn't much out there. And it'd be nice for the world to be able to enjoy this. And just something to kind of keep the, to continue on with the blocking of the sun. So did these come out? Oh yeah, like so, with the lights. Back then that was probably pretty rare too, wasn't it? I would think so, especially with the, with the lights on it. Cool. Of course it has a sunroof. That's oh, yeah. wrapped in leather as well. 